So the first mentorship I ever joined was thirty five thousand. The and first? The first, yeah. Jesus. The first man. I mean, so it happened really, really quickly. It's like I went to a boot camp that was like 2,500, and then I went to a mastermind that was 7,500, and then I joined the inner circle that was 35,000, okay. right? So it's kind of like it was a quick progression, but all this happened in like 10 days. So <laughs> it, it was like, wow, my this, this Chase Inc. is running. But <laughs> the thing that changed the game for me is I realized the level of access that I had. So like you just spoke on meeting eight-figure earners, right? Mm -hmm. This is back when I was first starting my like my, my journey as an entrepreneur, whatever the case may be. So like I'm around other 100,000, couple million dollar earners, which is a lot for me at this time. And it's expanding my mind. I feel like people don't understand that when you get into these rooms, like the goal is to be at the bottom of the totem pole yes, because yes. people can throw the rope down to you and only bring you up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the smartest in the room. And if I am, that's a problem because I'm not in a room. I'm in a cage. Mm -hmm. So I always want to be in a room where I'm literally feeling so shaken up, so uncomfortable that it's just like, yo, I, I, I have to grow. That's the only way you go to the gym. That's how you grow your muscles. You, they get shocked. Yeah. They get open up to new possibilities. So now it's like, if this happened when I, and, and mind you, that $35,000 that I paid, it's getting me into rooms and it's giving me strategies to go and make that 10 times over. Yeah. So now I just realized that this $35,000 investment just made me another $2 million. Mm -hmm. Well, what if I join a $55,000 mentorship? That $55,000 mentorship just made me almost $2 million in a day. So I'm just learning over and over and over that the more information I get, the more money I make. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. it's 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 like it's like a lever you just keep dumping more and that's the sole reason i tell people all the time like you can't be closed fisted with money yeah. you can't because money is like energy what you put in is what you get out mm -hmm. you cannot if if i have a closed fist with money right mm -hmm. nobody can put anything inside of it but if i have my hand open and i'm giving my hand is also now open to receive not that that's what it's about but it's also open to receive and get more and and just learn and keep growing as an individual All right, we're here, Social Brew Podcast. Man, make sure you like, subscribe, send a uh, uh, send us to a friend. Five star reviews only. All of that. Share. Donnie, share, share, share. Donnie Sleepy. Donnie Super Sleepy. Download the episodes. What else we got? <laughs> subscribe Last to the podcast. <laughs> subscribe to the podcast. We got We got to start off, Donnie. Um, yesterday was epicness. Yesterday was pure black excellence. Yeah. What? Oh, mm. We were yeah. able to celebrate 300 episodes. 1 million downloads in a 30-day period. 90%. How many people were in the room last night? Oh, it, it, it was probably about two something. Two something. Two something. I opened the room and asked that all of the first generation millionaires who were in attendance to stand up. And all you heard was chairs moving. Ninety plus slowly. percent of the room stood up. It was crazy. And in my mind, when I preframed how I would deliver that, my next thing to say was, "I want you guys to look around, like look around and celebrate in this moment." But I was so taken aback when I saw that many people stand up in the room. Two hundred plus people, ninety plus percent of them stood up saying. I'm a first generation millionaire. Like I was at a loss for words. Yeah. That was true black excellence. Q from 112 and friends. Rocked. All of his friends. He brought out Case. Yeah. He brought out uh, Tamika from Escape. He brought out Dondria. Wingo. Wingo from Jagged Edge. From Jagged Edge. Um, Jay Holiday. Jay Holiday. Yo, it was a concert. This was not a social proof alumni affair. This was a concert, an R and B concert oh, sponsored yeah. by Social Proof. <laughs> That's a fact. It That's was fact. awesome. It was awesome. Um, and to 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 that point, man, we're just like looking to do things differently and bring people together. We got a special guest today. We do joining have a the conversation. Guest joining the conversation today excited to have you this is our our first time meeting in person absolutely we've had a couple of exchanges over text kind of setting this up and putting yeah she it ghosted me like three times but it's all right though <laughs> she's a ghoster bro i am so. i am and a professional a ghoster. ghoster but let me tell you how slick david is he's a ghoster just out of the box He's making it clear that I'm going to ghost you. So just hit Donnie. He because just posted a whole video about it. 
<laughs> it yeah. might take three days, five days, but she'll she'll respond to the text eventually. She's better at it than me. Yeah. I, I know myself. I know myself, bro. We'll have a conversation right now. And by the time I leave here, my mind is on something totally different. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope people don't take offense. It's just I don't know how to manage a whole lot of information and conversation. Like we were just here. Um, Lynette was talking about uh, Pinterest, like in our, our podcast on Pinterest. And she's like, oh, we could do this. And it's uh, 90% women. And then it's, this is the demographic. And this is what we could do. I'm like, oh, great, great. Yeah. Awesome. Completely checked out. I, I was I was checked out. One, I trust that she's going to do a good job with that. But I'm like, yo, just go do, you know what I mean? Go do what you do. Just do what you do best. Yeah, that's uh, blaming it on my head, not my heart. But Brian, what's up, man? Yo, I'm super happy to be back in Atlanta with y'all, yeah. man. Yo, we here with it. Man, I, yeah. it's, been, it's been dope to see what you do. On the entrepreneurship side, too, because, like, first off, king of event spaces. He understands event spaces, how to make money. I have an event space that doesn't make money, by the way. It we lost money that. for a long time. It, it What? Yeah. Because it's not, because I'm thinking you have something, people book it, but you got to be intentional. You don't just have an event space and you just make money out of nowhere. Right. Like you have to be intentional. Oh, 100%. I yeah. think that's the biggest thing that people don't realize is like you're running a business. It's not like you just, it's like, for example, Airbnb. It's not like I'm going to just create an Airbnb and all of a sudden I'm $10,000 a month. Like it doesn't just happen like yeah. that. Right. That doesn't happen with any business. You have to be intentional. I am an event space owner. I am a business owner. I am a podcast host. Like you have to be extremely intentional about what you're doing yeah. or else no one's going to care about it like how you care about it. You know, like no one's going to care about social proof like Danny and Donnie, right? Like no one, like no one's going to care about my event space like Brian. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So you have to really just push it every single day. And like people be afraid to promote their own business. That's a fact. That's the crazy part. Like people be ashamed. And it's just like, yo, you have to understand if they don't know you, they cannot flow you. Yeah. People have to know what you're doing. They have to know what you're about for them to even support you. Yeah, you know why people don't, you know, I, one of the major reasons people don't, uh, promote their business. Do you know why? Tell me. What would be okay? What would be? I want to hear from both of you all. What is? What would you say is the number one reason people don't promote their business? Let me start with Donnie. I think the number one pe- reason people don't promote their business is because they're afraid nobody's gonna. They're afraid people won't support it. Like they're afraid to be seen as a failure. Mm, that's one hundred percent. Just to think? piggyback off that, like I feel like it's also because at the back of their mind, their subconscious is telling them that they're not ready for success. That they don't deserve success. Like, oh, my mom, I come from three generations of poverty. My mom's a janitor. My dad's a clerk. I don't deserve to be successful. I don't deserve to be the first millionaire. You're literally who your bloodline's been waiting for. Mm-hmm. You have to do everything in your power to be a millionaire. So it's like, what are you? why are you playing around with your own privilege? That's a fact. That's yeah. a fact. I think, especially in this day and age, the number one reason people don't want to promote their business online is because they don't want to mess up their page. Oh, you mean the aesthetic? The aesthetic. That's crazy. You mean the aesthetic, aesthetic, the aesthetic is keeping, of the page. keeping you from being successful? 100%. Wow. wow. You know, that, that actually, so, okay. Um, I had a very short term client. Um, we're kind of in limbo right now. She's an amazing person. Right. Um, but this person hired me, they came to me and hired me to be their coach. And she's like, Hey, I want to build my brand on social media and I need help kind of growing my business on social media. And I'm like, okay, cool. So I run this play together, tell her what to do, what kind of content to post. And she's like, but I don't want to just be seen as the X, Y, Z girl. <laughs> then, what, what do you want to be seen as? <laughs> then, then what's the conversation here? And it really was difficult for her to process, you know, because a lot of her content is not like overly sexy, but, you know, she's fly and she's got money. She's making money and she's doing things and she wants to show this lifestyle. So her business model is very unsexy, but it's what's making her all this money. And she wants she doesn't make any money off of social media. It's all external of social media. And she's like, I want to bring it here and start creating this content. So we, Hey, let's go through some content types. This is what you need to post. These are the videos I want to see you do. Let's come up with these captions, blah, blah, blah. She's like, well, I don't want to sound so salesy. I don't sound so I don't want to salesy look so. is always the next word. What are we doing here? McDonald's is always selling hamburgers, fries and coffee. Like it just every single day, you, you never mm. pull into a McDonald's or a Wendy's or a Burger King. And they tell you, 
Don't sound too salesy today. You better upsize every single order. <laughs> every single order is actually in the training. And these are multi-billion dollar corporations whose job it is. They hire people intentionally who have no shame in sounding salesy. Would you like extra with that? Would you like to upsize that? Would you like to add a blah, 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 blah? Every single day, multi-billion. And then we take the posture of, well, I don't want to sound too aggressive with my sales pitch. I don't want to be in people's face too much for this reason and this reason only and wonder why you plateau in your business. Said no mm. successful entrepreneur ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you feel me? It's like, it goes back to being intentional. Like, people really be afraid to make money. People really be afraid to, like, the offer you don't make is the offer they can't take. Period. Point blank period. And I live by that. It's like, yo, like, for example, I had my first $50,000 a month with event spaces because I made a new offer. Literally, that's all I did. I took, and people always ask me, like, Brian, how do you, how do, you do all the different packages? What I, I literally took everything that I have and I put it together and I called it, this is what I have package. That was it. I didn't overthink mm. it, I didn't overcomplicate it, but people be like, people be stuck on a domain name for their website. Man, mm. what? Listen. We can have a whole conversation about this. Right. Stuck on the Instagram name. Right. <laughs> That's a bumba clot. Like, whoa. Bumba clot. Yeah, let me tell you how I feel about this episode already. You know how a song starts off in the first verse? And it's it's just real, you know, let me get you kind of warmed up. Then the second <laughs> verse gets a little harder, but then the bridge hits. Right. And that final hook hits. We went straight to the bridge. <laughs> <laughs> we went. Brian's to energy is he's the bridge. Oh, for sure. Dottie's up now. Dottie's Dottie, up. Dottie, oh, she took a, she took a nap. In, she took a nap in the car before she got here. What? I was outside, <laughs> knocked out. So we're running on six hours of sleep in the last forty-eight hours. Mm, um, Kenny and I were at a mastermind in Austin, Texas, mm. and we had to get up at four, well, three a.m. to catch a red-eye flight to come here. That day went all day. We didn't leave the Social Proof Alumni Affair last night until a little after midnight. Went to bed at about 2 because we tried to go to an after party with Sarah and Marvin. That didn't work out. Traffic just too, doing too much. Anyway, six 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 and a half hours of sleep in the last 48 hours. Exhausted. But we're on the bridge. Now, we're on the bridge now. <laughs> we in the Matrix now. We, what? Yeah, you, know, you, know, now. It's, you know what's interesting? Like As you were saying it, I just realized that the, the dream, the dream, the reality of the dream is never as sexy as the actual dream. Yeah. Because if, if somebody told you 10 years ago, yo, you'd be traveling to this mastermind, you got events, and do you hanging out, are you making all this money and do that is like the ideal dream. But when you live in the reality of that thing, mm -hmm. it's like, yo, I had six hours of sleep. Yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like I want people, I, I really hope people are prepared for the thing that you want, especially the leading up to being able to live this dream that's not gonna feel like the dream yeah. at all. Yeah the work that it takes and it doesn't even feel like you're in the dream when you get to the dream because it just feels like more work it feels the like reward more work. for your work it's more work. is more work more work it's more work it's like steve harvey and i'm not going to quote this because i don't remember the exact quote it's making so strong. i'm a yanni close that door too please i'm a kind of paraphrase it steve harvey was just like yo if you go from making fifty thousand dollars a year to making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year and now you're complaining about it how can you complain about it you went from making $50,000 a year, even if you wanted a million dollars a year, I know I'm butchering this quote, but even if you wanted a million dollars a year, you're making $150,000 a year now. Be happy because you used to make 50 grand a year. Yeah. yeah. But 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 you, it's hard to be happy because it doesn't see, in that scenario, in the moment. you go from making 50 or just in the scenario that like you make 50 a year to um, $150,000 a year, that's... What is that making, uh, let's say, five grand a month or four grand a month to, um, was that about 12 grand a month? It's not like today you made 4,000 and tomorrow you make 12,000. It's like you make 4,000 and 4,500, that's no big difference. 4,500 to 5,000 is no big difference. 5,000 to 6,000 doesn't seem like such a big, uh, and if especially if you're, you're, you're gradually authentically growing your business it does i don't i don't i don't feel different i mean reflecting hindsight maybe Think but a part of the factory, journey baby. yeah it wasn't cheesecake factory to this it was like a little bit Gradual. a little bit a little bit mm -hmm. it was boiling the frog yeah okay i haven't heard that one before no boiling the frog i'm, I'm, you I'm put too it, young for that one I'll you put it. a you you put a frog because that seems like instant death 
No, if if you if you put a frog in boiling water, it'll jump around and get out. It's too hot. But if you put a frog oh, in that. lukewarm yeah. water and turn the heat up a little bit, uh, turn the heat up a little bit, you. just okay. a little bit, eventually the the frog will never feel the change, but it'll cook from the inside. Wow. It doesn't feel it because it's it's gradual. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's, it it do, it doesn't feel like I'm still in the habit of work, consistent work. And now I'm trying to break the habit, but I'm so indoctrinated into the work, I cannot stop. Ooh. People think it's like, yo, it's just easy. Just try to relax. I've been going hard for 12 years every day. Mm-hmm. Imagine eating whatever you want for 12 years every day. Then someone says, oh, you just need to go on a diet. Oh, you need to do a, a cleanse, a detox. What? Yeah. How you do that? Yeah. You know what else it is that people don't realize that I feel like now people are really more understanding? Lifestyle inflation. I feel mm. like I got Life smacked in the face hard. with that mm. lifestyle inflation because people don't even realize. Right. It's like you just said, right. You've been used to eating the same thing every single day. But now you get a pay raise. You go from making 50,000, 150,000. So now it's just like, you know what? I'm about to get a pay raise. 100%. Man, I used to I'm, I'm used to eating tuna and crackers. But, you know, today we're going to get the root Chris. <laughs> now it's the just tuna tartar. Right? Like, now we have the tuna, tuna tartar. Right. Not, the, not the chicken of the sea. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> tuna tartar. Like now it's a whole different conversation conversation because your mind is already prepped for making more money yeah so immediately subconsciously you're prepped for spending more money Mm -hmm. you see what i'm saying so most people don't like that's like so that's the other silent killer of it it's like you're making more money slowly but most people are also spending more money slowly Mm -hmm. and they don't even realize it i you know i'm used to living in the trenches but now i see that new crib in uh you know midtown i'm gonna go turn up yeah you didn't even realize you're spending that kind of money now. Sure. It's a whole different conversation. Yep. Yeah, you know, we spend my old salary on food a month. Wow. <laughs> Light flex. <laughs> it's disgusting, actually. It's not even something that I'm proud of. I eat so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even funny, honey. I get whatever I want on the menu. I have no control. I want all the appetizers. Why do I have to pick when I can have both? Ooh. And then at the end of the month, I'm like, I don't I don't have to pick. Like, there are just a couple of things. <laughs> like, and, and I think it's connected to past trauma. When I lost everything 2008 to 2010, like, nobody knew not my mom, not my daughter's father. Nobody knew that me and my daughter for about a year were splitting a Wendy's value meal. Like she mm-hmm. get the fries, I get the nuggets, we split the drink. Like nobody knew. And wow. I didn't live like that growing up. We were very middle class growing up. I discovered poverty on my own, my own terrible financial decisions, mm-hmm. right? And so nobody knew that 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 my friends was taking us out and I would eat a little bit and like, oh, I'm not so hungry because I had to take the rest of the food home so Deja could have a delicious meal to eat. Right. Mm. She never missed a meal. I would miss some meals, probably how I stayed so skinny at that time. (laughs) But she never missed a meal. I would go on dates. Oh, you don't eat a lot. No, I don't. I'm taking food home to my daughter. Right. Now, that was the I, play? I don't, it wasn't really the, the play. The single mom play? No. The single mom no, play. It wasn't, it wasn't really the play. Like, <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I'm sorry, play. Daddy. It sounds like the Yo. single mom play. It was, it was not the play. I didn't date for real when I was going through that stage mm. of my life, but I had people who were in my life before that happened. I want to talk knew, about this so bad. That Ooh. knew what was happening, that still wanted to look out, mm-hmm. right? And and we still hang out. I didn't date new people during that time. But anyway, I say that to say, now I've always been a lover of food. I'm from New Orleans. It's like the food capital of the United States, at least. I go, you know, I want the calamari and the tuna tartare. Mm-hmm. By the way, let me get that shrimp cocktail. Can you tell me more about the lamb lollipops? Like, wow. that's just me. I've seen it. Ooh. In the flesh. That, no, is, keep that, going. Is, that <laughs> is the one thing. There are people who put their money in cars, mm-hmm. shoes. You buy. You got every hoodie, every game, every pair of Jordans. Mm-hmm. Feed me. <laughs> you don't even have to feed. Like I'm talking waitress, server. Please feed me whatever the bill is. I got it. Yeah. Like, and when I look back and really calculated how much, because the the food expense is one of those categories on my balance sheet. That I don't ever want to look at. You, can't, like, you just, just can't justify it. I can't justify, <laughs> can't justify it. how much money I am spending on food. But I've been this way for years. Just like you said, you've been doing this thing for 12 years. How do I stop? Like, how do I stop? 
All right, listen, every single week, every episode, you hear me talking about the morningmeetup.com. It's the community. Let me show you what's happening here. Every single morning, Monday through Friday, there's 400 plus people on a Zoom call, right? We're learning, we're talking, we're growing together, and this is you. There's all these people here. It's all these people in the morning meetup. Hundreds of people reading books, growing. We get together quarterly. It's amazing. And for some reason, you just keep looking at, just go to themorningmeetup.com and get in the circle. And then you'll be like way happier. Just themorningmeetup.com. Let's get back to the episode. Oh my God. I don't even know that I want to stop. I'm just saying that <laughs> inflation, lifestyle inflation is <laughs> like, real. Oh, real. <laughs> like, but can we, can we, can, yes. we, can we be real for a second? For sure. Can we, because I want to like extract a little piece of what you just said. And okay. I, like you spoke, you just About spoke, a single mind play? He like, like else. one degree oh, after that. Like the, the. Restricting your dating when you were, I don't want to say broke, but like at a- Out broke as hell. Yes. <laughs> so like, can we really, like, I feel like this should be normalized. Like, am yeah. I, like, I feel like more people, and especially I'm not, I, I could only talk as a man because I'm a man, but like more men need to understand if you're not in a particular place financially, why are mm -hmm. you focusing on women? I don't agree. You don't. Yeah. I don't agree. You what? I do not finish your point. Okay, okay, agree. okay. Now I gotta come correct. Now I gotta come correct. Cause I'm gonna get a rebuttal. All right, no, no. You thought this was a no brainer. No, no, no. It's always a brainer. No, no, no. We gonna get it. We gonna get it. Nah. So I feel like I gotta pick up the mic. Like, well, thesis. <laughs> nah. So I mean, nah, honestly, like, I feel like if you're really trying to change your situation, mm -hmm. you don't like your credit score, you don't like your bank account, you don't like the place you are in life, right? Why the hell are you focusing on women? Yeah. Focus on your grind, focus on your bag, focus on mm -hmm. changing your class in society, then you can go back and double back. And I mean, don't get me wrong, if like, you know, the right woman shows up in your life, whatever the case may be, and y'all grind it out because I see that happen every day, then mm -hmm. absolutely make it happen, make it count, and y'all build something together, yeah. right? But your main focus and main priority should not be courting women. Your main yeah. focus and priority should not be, hey, yo, what's up, ma? Let me take you out. Like, and then you out here. And then the worst part about it is you going on that date, you ask her to split the bill. Brokey? No, okay, now that, Brokey? <laughs> That's crazy to First me. First of all, Brokey is one of my, okay, little Brokey. Sit down. That's bro crazy. <laughs> okay, little Brokey. That's crazy. That, that I don't agree with. I, I, I don't agree with. Uh, uh, you splitting the I bill? Mean, yeah, no, nah, that, that's weird. That's I, I yeah, bro, when I used to be a server, I swear to like I'm gonna tell y'all this one time, right? There was a there was a meal called Yo, a market. You were the lit server. I already oh, was yeah, the was best like, yeah. freaking server. You so were the lit server. <laughs> people server. literally waiting for me tables out two hour away for Brian. Yeah, but anyway, I, I digress. Like I remember we had a meal called the Marco meal, right? You could get like a chicken parmesan. Where spaghetti. was you working? Maggiano's. Okay, all right, for sure. Yeah, yeah Garden yeah, yeah. City, right? Right? Trash Italian food. I like I like Maggiano. No. A chicken like parmesan, parmesan sandwich is crazy. <laughs> they, put, they put carrot chunks in their spaghetti or the lasagna, one of them, and it always tripped me out. Like, who puts chunks of carrots in it's their It's in spaghetti? the eggplant parmesan. It's in the parmesan. How do I remember that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo. Yo. I was about to sell a whole mark over here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Reese, okay, give wait, me wait, the wait. camera. First off, first off, I love Maggiano's. I will do an ad right now. Right I now. I love y'all. Wait, Reese, come over here real quick. I'm so mad this is happening when right I now. said that the experience was subpar, I meant the one time that I went, but... <laughs> Not them giving free publicity to the place that me, fired me. That's he didn't crazy. Let me finish talking about all the other times that I went and there was something on your menu that was absolutely outstanding for somebody there and we would love to do an ad. Anyway, go we ahead. Not to. them giving free publicity to the place that fired me. Oh, <laughs> they fired you. The loyalty? Crazy. I don't know. I, I crazy. feel like Why'd they fire you? You could have earned the fire. That's you, 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 know, know, that's, that's, you yeah. give me earned fired <laughs> energy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that's just, it was Yo, for no reason, bro. Cut the episode. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Your personality said something that it, got it, you. It, 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 oh wow! What? <laughs> what's, what's, just, what? Okay, real quick, put a pin in it. But what, why'd you get fired? Damn. Uh, let me. Why did I get fired? Exactly. No, 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 you know yeah, exactly. You, know you weren't what, wrong. You, you, you know, know what it is. Nah, you know what? Because <laughs> honestly, I'm not gonna lie. I was insubordinate. Like, Oops. were we wrong? Yo, All camera right. back. Camera back, Reese. See? Really though? <laughs> Maziano's, we're, we're on your side. It's okay? that gift of discernment. Loyalty is correct. <laughs> anyway, back to my story. So 
I'm with a, uh, I'm, I'm taking care of a two top. That's a, that's a couple, right? And they get a chicken parmesan. Pause. The chicken parmesan, nineteen. Hold on, two top is possible. That's what? possible. How is that possible? possible? That's two people on a table. Two, <laughs> two people that's, on a table. That's, that's crazy. That's I'm crazy. Yo, we're, try, we're trying to understand. Nah, it. <laughs> no, no, that's he, really. He's like, yo, I'm nervous sitting on his yo, on this couch right now. <laughs> is this not a safe place? Like, what? Is this Yo, this place. whole room has been very New York all oh day, my bro. God, bro. All right, we'll go ahead. We I'm sorry. In New York next time. This is crazy, <laughs> bro. Stay on task. Stay on Yo, task. this is crazy. So anyway, they, bro, I don't forgot my whole story, so bro. You're like, serving the two, those top. two top. So, Right, right, right. So parenthesis, parenthesis, parenthesis. We was talk about brokies taking females out when take women out when you know they don't got the bag like that, mm. right? Cool. So I'm at a table, right, and they order chicken parmesan. Chicken parmesan, twenty dollars, nineteen ninety five, right? The bill come, he said, yo, you could do separate checks. Mm. What? On a $19.95 meal, my guy? Mm. Separate checks? I honestly, like, I wanted to say with every heart, like, I asked my manager if I could do this. I was like, yo, can I can I take care of this table? Can I just cover the bill for my mans? Because I think it's it's kind of looking bad right now for my, my boy, you know? Mm. But it just kind of, like, I don't, like, if you, and I'm not trying to speak on nobody's pockets or nothing like that, but... Is it safe to say that if you have to split a $20 meal, you probably weren't in the best financial situation to go on this date? Either that or she wasn't giving take me home energy. Regardless, mm. though, as a man. That's the a, date didn't go well. No, 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 no. Regardless. Regardless. I'm going to stand on that regardless, even if the date is trash. You need to still cover You got to hold your own. Like, yeah, for real, yes, like as a man. But I can, I can relate to someone who, if the conversation isn't going well, now I couldn't do it because my my temperament and my my Your my class. heart won't let me do that. But if somebody if we if thought it was something else and I'm getting the vibe that you are just here for a meal, oh no. you, you dutching it all day. I'm not, but I can understand Dutch somebody doing it. <laughs> nah, here. but that's still crazy. Dutch boy. Dutch boy over <laughs> that's here. crazy. A whole bunch of Dutch boys nah, out here. Yo, listen, man. Dutch all my Dutch boys, comment in the chat. Nah, nah. You, you, you got to no, kill them with I'm kindness. I'm with you. I, first of all, I just don't think... So, it's twofold. I don't think that it's black or white. I don't think that you should just absolutely not be dating because you're broke, Right. I don't think for any reason it should be your focus. You should not be focused mm -hmm. on dating. When I was broke, like I was so broke, I was embarrassed to date, but I'm really transparent. So people knew, like I would turn people down and, and, you know, guys never take no for an answer. So I was like, no, for real, like, come on, we should. And I'm like, no, you know, my money's not together right now. My mind is on a whole totally different place. I'm a single mom and I just got to like my daughter right now is my priority. I would say that like, that's my conversation. Mm. And people would still say, but let me just treat you to something nice. You deserve something nice. And every now and then you like, you know what? I do deserve something nice. I do deserve more than just going home and turning on a TV with the basic cable because everything has been cut off and going home and eating another mm. pack of ramen noodles. So every now and then you say, yes, but that person knew what they were dealing with and, and what I was dealing with. I am a bring something to the table kind of woman. And that doesn't mean financially, right? Spicy. I'm a bring something to the table woman. And let me explain that before women be like, men are supposed to, it starts with me. And in that phase in my life, I felt so depleted. Like I felt like I brought nothing to the table, not even good conversation because my mindset was so focused on something else that I couldn't be a good date to you. So I'm not going to come with my down energy and my down pockets and my down everything else and do what? So I personally just wasn't open to like, dating during that time and i think men who are in that situation um i believe that everybody should have companionship at every point in their lives right because it literally keeps you sane having people around you keeps you sh you keeps you sane mm -hmm. but if you are a man spending your last dollar to date you're never going to stop that cycle and get out of the, get out of that hole you just won't so if if that is the conversation i agree spending your last dollar to date. But I don't think you should have a certain amount of money to date. No. Because we're we're seeing it from a different lens, a different perspective. You're saying it because of where you are. You can do that. But in college, bro, I, I wasn't trying to, I was trying to find somebody that would take me to lunch off you campus. Thought? <laughs> so I think, honestly, we're saying I mean, the same I'm, thing. So, I, I mean, so. but here's the thing. I, the focus should be, 
happy. Whatever makes you happy. Mm -hmm. Because some people don't know how to focus on their grind. And they, they, they have to use that outlet or, I mean... I, I don't know. I, th I think it's just coming from a different lens of, oh, this is what should happen at this at this level that you have it. You can say that. Right. But there's some people who just ain't got it. They're not just supposed to be lonely for the rest of their life. No, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I had a flashback. Totally random as you're saying that, like, just because you don't have any money doesn't mean that you don't deserve love and companionship at that time. I will never forget. I was. At the MARTA train station one day, I used to take, I used to live all the way by the airport and mm -hmm. I worked in Dunwoody. So that traffic getting to and from work was crazy. Mm -hmm. So I took the train. I'm walking down the steps of a train station coming home. It's dark. And I find two homeless people in the stairwell having sex. Oh, way. Wow. Mm -hmm. and <laughs> wow. They were too broke to get it in. Wow. I'm walking down the stairs and I'm like, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Oh my God. And the look, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Hold on real quick. In the stairwell. In the stairwell. How, how, in. how? How was it doing? From the back. <laughs> Yo, this is not a safe do it again, place. Do it again, do it again. What was that? <laughs> this is not a safe place. Yo. And you going to have to change the rating talking, on the video now. As you were talking, I was just thinking like, because at that time, <laughs> that Donnie thought, how do you even have the time to think about <laughs> like sex and you're homeless and I got questions like I got questions <laughs> everybody got a roster I, I got guess. questions everybody has a roster and that's exactly where I'm going with this there's somebody for everybody at any time of your life 100 mm percent -hmm. everybody has a roster 100 percent so I think so like I didn't say that there has to be a certain like it's not like you have to have ten thousand dollars in a bank to date, right? What I'm saying is that if you're not in a financial place that you want to be in, dating should not be your priority. I agree. Priority for that's sure. really that's 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 my that's I the agree. statement. It's not like all right, cool. If you're not making ten thousand dollars a month, you should not be like. There's no number on yeah. it. I get if what you're, you're not in a financial position that you desire to be in, dating should not be your priority. That's a thesis yeah. statement. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean. There's a lot of things that shouldn't be a priority. It shouldn't even forget dating. You shouldn't be eating out. Eating out should not shouldn't be your be priority at all. If you ain't got no money, like uh, if you ain't got no money, we could say it this way: that your your server job or your waitress job should not be your priority, right? You should be focused on like whatever your dream is and how you can make more money, right? You're focused on spending forty hours a week at this job and making these tips, and you're focused on getting more hours when really, really, you should probably focus on how you can get more from the hours that you're putting. I want to elaborate hmm. on that. So Ooh. I just, um, I just posted about this. I think it was yesterday on Instagram. I, uh, Kenny and I invested in a mastermind and at the level that we invested at part, one of the perks was a, an, an actual private mastermind with a, maybe like nine or 10 other entrepreneurs on a private plane. And so we just had this private plane experience where we're coaching and we're, we're, it's not even getting coached. It's a network like these people you want to network on this flight. And in the post, I said, I used to hate hearing the words. It takes money to make money. Like when I didn't have any money, that was the worst thing you could say to me. Well, I mean, it takes money to make money. Like, but from where am I to get this money that I'm supposed to make money with? Right. Like, how is, how does this happen? And I remember the first time when I finally started working a job that could give me some disposable income. I had five hundred dollars and I invested in an opportunity for mentorship mm. with that five hundred dollars. Now, I didn't just have five hundred dollars. There was definitely a balance on a bill that could have been paid. Mm -hmm. Right. But I get this five hundred dollars and I invested in the mentorship immediately like i'm talking about within like a month or so immediately i have now this perspective that puts me in a situation to now start making money consistently continuously not consistently at that time but over and over and over again in frequencies five hundred dollars put a couple thousands of dollars more in my pocket over that 30-day period and then i take it and now I qualify for another kind of level of mentorship. And I think it was like maybe a thousand dollars at that time. And I learned something else and learned something else. And I bring this back full circle to wow, we invested at a level that put us on a private plane to learn from eight figure 
CEOs. Ooh, and I received some strategies on that flight that was like mind blowing that once I execute that investment that I made to learn what's about to make me this money becomes so minute. Mm. It took that money for me to get this seat on this flight mm. to go out there and execute this thing that's about to make me even more money. Mm. And that investment you think twice about. I don't know if I want to invest that. Is it worth it? You know, the 55,000 investment and then it's another 55 and then I just did 60 here and 155. 000. Like, are these investments worth it? Yes, it takes money to make money. What situation have you found, both of you? Like, what have you done and where you can connect the dots to where for you, it absolutely took money for you to level up financially? Mm, I guess so. So I'll take that one first. I feel like, so the first mentorship I ever joined was 35000 The and first? The first, yeah. Jesus. The first, men <laughs> I mean, so it happened really, really quickly. It's like I went to a boot camp that was like 2500 and then I went to a mastermind that was 7500 and then I joined the inner circle that was 35000 okay. right? So it's kind of like, it was a quick progression, but all this happened in like 10 days. So <laughs> it, it was like, wow, my this, this Chase Inc. is running. But... <laughs> The thing that changed the game for me is I realized the level of access that I had. So like you just spoke on meeting eight figure earners, right? Mm -hmm. This is back when I was first starting my like my, my journey as an entrepreneur, whatever the case may be. So like I'm around other hundred thousand, couple million dollar earners, which is a lot for me at this time. And it's expanding my mind. I feel like people don't understand that when you get into these rooms, like the goal is to be at the bottom of the totem pole yes, because yes, yes. people can throw the rope down to you and only bring you up. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the smartest in the room. And if I am, that's a problem because I'm not in a room. I'm in a cage. Mm -hmm. So I always want to be in a room where I'm literally feeling so shaken up, so uncomfortable that it's just like, yo, I, I, I have to grow. That's the only way you go to the gym. That's how you grow your muscles. You, they get shocked. Yeah. They get opened up to new possibilities. So now it's like, if this happened when I, and, and mind you, that $35,000 that I paid, it's getting me into rooms and it's giving me strategies to go and make that 10 times over. Yeah. So now I just realized that this $35,000 investment just made me another $2 million. Mm -hmm. Well, what if I join a $55,000 mentorship? That $55,000 mentorship just made me almost $2 million in a day. So I'm just learning over and over and over that the more information I get, the more money I make. <clears throat> Mm. it's 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 like it's like a lever you just keep dumping more and that's the whole reason i tell people all the time like you can't be closed fisted with money yeah. you can't because money is like energy what you put in is what you get out mm. you cannot if if i have a closed fist with money right mm -hmm. nobody can put anything inside of it but if i have my hand open and i'm giving my hand is also now open to receive not that that's what it's about but it's also open to receive and get more and, and just learn and keep growing as an individual. Mm -hmm. Like the more, like we have, mm, we live in a society right now where information is so easily accessible. My parents didn't have this information. My grandparents didn't have this information. So now we live in a time where literally you can just turn on your phone and get access to literally billions and billions of ounces of data. Yeah, you, You'd be a fool not to take it yeah. and invest in it for curation of information crazy man i think yo i think i realized i didn't i didn't i honestly didn't realize the power of what we've been doing until last night oh. brian you should have i know i know you couldn't make it because you had your challenge but it was believe me i i, I would we're gonna talk about that off camera the, bro, the room first off so neo reaches out to some of the people in the room because you know i got this nonprofit, and you don't know, want to get back at before the schools before covid we were like going to the schools and talking mm -hmm. to the kids about entrepreneurship and uh i was still working at the kiosk and i invested in a couple entrepreneurs where i this one young lady she had a really dope brand what was it called it was called uh uh you are what is it you are something enough it was called yanni Yanni, not you, Yanni, but it was like, you are <laughs> enough. It was something like that. It was just a really, really dope concept. So she told me her plan, you know, how she's going to sell it. And then I helped her out with uh, kind of prices on wristbands and stuff like that. So we went through the whole order. And from my nonprofit, I purchased the first order. But I told her, you have to give me my money back. Not that I, not that I need the couple hundred dollars back. But I'm trying to teach her, if someone loans you money, mm -hmm. you pay them back. Pay back. If you get a lot of credit, you pay it back. Like, let's just start that process. So there's pressure. I want my money back. Invested. 
She sold the she sold her wristbands, gave me my money back. Amazing. It was another young lady who had a a, a t shirt brand. I paid for the first run. First run was like seven hundred something dollars, and I was able to invest in that. And I said, "Yo, need my money, Layla. I need my money back." Mm -hmm. She sold the shirt, so she's understanding. Yo, I sold a bunch of shirts, but I started in a negative, so I gotta take my portion that I owe, pay it back. Mm -hmm. So she paid it back and then gave me more money for the next run of shirts. So now she's in profit. So she understands. And I'm telling you, this whole vision, man. I just. I want to um, get back to going to the schools. Mm -hmm. I want to get a whole bus, load all these entrepreneurs up on the bus and pull up on the bus. And like, they know that these like millionaires just come to their school. When they see this bus, they understand, they already know what's up. And then we can see some people have an idea, a concept a business. We can invest in them. They got to give us our money back, but I can pair them with a mentor like a Donnie and Donnie might say, yo, I like this person's idea. I will be an equity partner. I coach you, mentor you, you do the work. This is a business that we grow together. So the nonprofit is dope because we can facilitate all this. The mentor is into it because they're coaching this person because they're coaching someone that's running their business, but they're an equity partner. The kid gets to work with somebody who, who's proven success and they get to start a business and like they'll become multimillionaires because any if I pair Donnie with a 16-year-old girl with a vision, an idea, and they're coachable, she's going to win. It'll change her life forever. Listen, if I was going to teach you how to make a million dollars, would you give me 10,000? Like if I had a course teach you how to make a million dollars and you're po positive, you're going to make a million dollars, would you give me 10,000? Of course you would. It's no brainer, right? So in a calendar year, we make seven figures with the podcast. But there's 21 things that I extracted from that that you're going to need to launch a podcast. But I only got time to give you three right now. One is you need a distribution platform. The distribution platform is what you upload your podcast to. That platform sends it to Spotify, Apple, Google Play, so that your supporters can actually listen to your podcast. You're also going to need a microphone. You need a really good microphone so it's crispy audio. And three, you need an income strategy. This is not necessarily a hobby, unless you're going to make it a hobby. But I can teach you how I made the seven figures with these 21 things. Now, the good news is you don't have to give me 10,000. My ebook is only 37 bucks, okay? So listen, go to podcastebook.com and get the 21 things that you need. And I, I can explain it in detail, all the things that you need, okay? Podcastebook.com. Let's get to the episode. So I want to be able to facilitate all this. <clears throat> I realized we made it yesterday. What? When we're on stage, Neil comes on stage and he said, he, he said, I talked to a few people and um, I got them to commit $10,000 a piece to your nonprofit. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't get none of the money to the nonprofit, right? This is just so we can facilitate this thing, right? And he said, he said something key. He said, yo, it didn't take long. He said, almost everybody I asked was like, yo, you got $10,000 for Shane's nonprofit? They're like, yeah. He asked somebody else, yeah. He's like, yeah, of course. It took five seconds. Five seconds. Yo, yeah, of course. I got you. Mm -hmm. These people who could just give a quick 10,000. Right. So these people are on stage. And then Neil's like, so he it was like him and like nine other people that committed 10,000. And um, he was like, yeah, just say something about what you want to do. So I give him this whole vision, this idea. And then my man, Mike Sims, he said, hold on. He said, give me the mic. He said, hold on. I ain't know I had nothing to do with kids. Because Neil's just saying, yo, his nonprofit. And they're just yeah. saying yes. Yeah. He's like, yo, oh, whoa, kids. He said, I ain't know I had nothing to do with kids. He said, yo, I'm a, I'll give... 250,000. He mm -hmm. said, I'll give a quarter million. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Immediately. 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 In this moment, there's a man on stage that in a split second, he's given a quarter million dollars. Yeah. His brother mm -hmm. says, I'll give another 100,000. Mm -hmm. More people on stage are like, yo, I... I think Fox Wade said, yo, Neil, I know you asked for a 10, but I see a 10, I'll raise you another 10. I'm going to give 20. Mm -hmm. Person XM says, yo, I'll give 20. Marvin's like, yo, I'll give 20. Mm -hmm. We raised $600,000. 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, in 10 this minutes. moment. And I said, what is going on right now? Yeah. Who are these people? What have we assembled? People. Listen, my client this morning, uh, the Heart Zogs, the cleaning business uh, group, I took them to breakfast. Well, they actually ended up paying, so they took me. But we went to <laughs> breakfast this morning. And Janilka, the wife, she said, I, you know, I'm asking them, what would you guys think about the event last night? And they said, Donnie, even if we don't get to be on the podcast again, they were on the podcast this year. She's like, even if we don't get to be on the podcast, 
next year, can we please come to an event like this? Like, we need this environment. And I'm like, oh, once you're social proof alumni, you're, you're alum. in there, period. Oh, you're yeah. alum, right? I said, but what makes you say this? She said, I was in that room last night. First time when you asked all of the first generation millionaires to stand up, I looked around in astonishment. Then the $600,000 collected on 10 minutes. She said, I asked myself, who am I? Where am I? What room am I in right now? How do, how do I qualify to be in this room? This is her. She's like, I didn't even understand what room I was in. She didn't even understand the invite. And they are seven figure income earners. They're seven figure income earners. But to see people just saying, I'll do 250, me, 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 250, 10, to see people casually not even knowing what the nonprofit was about, saying, Shans has a nonprofit. Will you donate 10 grand? Yes. Not, can you send me more information? It was an instant. I know what this man has done for the community. It was an instant. I have seen what this man has done for the community. It was an instant. I have been a part of what this man is doing for the community. Yes. But then add the kids to that. $600,000 in 10 minutes flat. Oh my. It, I, I, I don't. First of all, Sims himself donated what the original goal was. Right. That, that, the 250 was the goal. He just, oh, 250. You didn't mention Kip Neo. You didn't mention it was the kids. I'll take care of it. Wow. Then everybody else, and, 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 and in that environment, you can't be the one who doesn't, right? In that room, we're in a room full of people who are givers just in their real lives. We go to dinner, everybody's fighting for the bill, right? Everybody's supporting everybody's deal. Everybody's promoting everybody's offer. There was no, no question about the $250,000 being raised that night. But you're in an environment of people who are doing good, in their lives and they're givers anyway like the forms i'm like everybody can't come to the stage but raise your raise your form in the air your donation form in the air if you intend to give a donation hands just going up 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 so not even a final number yet because you can't calculate what came in from the audience right it's uh, wow. it was somebody uh i think george actually he was like man i don't really need the credit but i got 22 i'm like He's like, I don't need the notoriety. It was like, and these people are coming off like, yo, just tell me where to send the money. And I'm like, what have we created here? But Shans, let me also say this. What you didn't know was Neo was putting these fillers out the whole time, right? While you're mixing and mingling and we're hosting the event, he's putting these fillers out. Suddenly I, I had one person who came to me and said, hey, I got to I gotta go. I know you guys are taking a donation. Where can I send the money? Okay. Five minutes later, another person, hey, I got to go. I know you guys are We hadn't even made the call for the donation. We hadn't even announced this. We hadn't talked about any foundation. Before that moment, four people had actually already asked, I have to leave. How can I donate right away? Mm -hmm. I went and got you for one person. I forget his name. I oh, always, Josh. For Josh. Josh yeah, I went yeah. to find you for Josh because people are like, they're not sneaking out of the room. This wasn't that environment. If you know, like Neo is telling people privately, like, this is what we're going to do. Get ready, you know, for this moment. If I have to go, I'm sneaking out like I didn't know anything. This wasn't an environment where people were sneaking out before the donation time comes. Mm -hmm. They're saying, I have to leave. How can I make my, my donation Y'all don't want to miss this. I don't want to miss it. I have to be a part of this. It was it's, insane. It's crazy. It's incredible. That's incredible. That's, that's why I wish it was. I, oh man, I wish it was there. I'm gonna make you feel bad about it. I deserve it. Yeah, man. you deserve it. Man. <laughs> I deserve it, man. You know what's so crazy? Like, like while we on the topic, I like I, I had my flight booked. Like you, you, you can ask. Like we had, we was coming into Atlanta for Thursday, but the challenge was literally 7:30 to nine, and this was seven to whenever it ended. Seven till this morning, for basically. Sure. Mm -hmm. So I had already like we had already talked outfits and everything. Uh, like the suit was already ready, dry clean, like ready to go. These guys come in and they're just like, yo, we're changing the date. You're speaking on Thursday. I'm just like, bro, I got to go to alumni dinner. They're just like, yo, it's all for a day. Like you need to come correct. Yeah. I'm like, huh? <laughs> bro, I already got this ticket bug. Like what yeah. you talking about? And Derek, he, he's in the challenge too. He's just like, bro, like I got the thing too. I got to miss it because we got this challenge. This thing's a big deal for us. Mm. I'm like, it was an executive decision to be made. Nah, at that I, point. I feel that. You know what? I, I do. I got, I got a shout out because you're in another state, but. 500 came in. I mean, everything's done. You might have came in like 11 o'clock. I saw that. 
And um, I, I, I really appreciated that because he had he had his event with Master Ma, with uh, Master P. You talking about uh, Marcus? Yeah, mm-hmm. five hundred. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he yeah, had his yeah, event yeah. the same day. Same yeah. day. I, I don't know why I did the event on everybody's challenge day and offer day, but, um, but I don't know why everybody did their offers and challenge days on the day of the event. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the but event it, was first. All right, for sure, for sure. It it was just crazy. But five walked in at like eleven o'clock, and um, I appreciated it. So I just gotta say, shouts out to like after everything's done, he just still showed up to say I'm here. Now you're in another state, so it's not. I'm not saying that to you. But he actually is there. subliminally telling you. you should no, no, no. I, I promise you. Flat out. Or, that was honestly the plan. Or you should have flown in, positioned yourself, done your challenge <laughs> in your hotel, I, and came through. Like, I'm just, because we're mobile entrepreneurs. We're digital entrepreneurs. 100%. That was the means, plan. Which means that we can do our challenge from anywhere in the world. But you made the executive decision to not only, not only miss the social proof dinner. I mean, you could have... All I'm saying is you could have done your challenge yeah. here in Atlanta at the podcast studio, yeah, at the content sure. creation studio. Absolutely. You could have done it and let us know and still come through the dent. Yo, but imagine. But we weren't. We, we will not make you feel bad for that. <laughs> yo, so, so Donnie, but she texts, I think it was this morning. She's like, yo, an amazing event. And the only thing I could see is, yo, we got work to do. I'm so inspired. So, so inspired. and she's like, yo, you already know. Let's go. So being in that environment like, there's so many, like, I got, like, four different meetings that I want to have with Donnie. Like, because just being in that environment, I'm excited the fact that there's one man that can give away 250000 What? What I'm not excited about is the fact that I'm not that person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo. I want to be. I listen. I want to be the person who stands on the stage that said. I'm not in a position where I can just give away two hundred fifty thousand dollars on a whim. Respectfully, on a whim. Respectfully, I gotta do some calculations. First of all, <laughs> you I, feel me? I, I, gotta, I gotta pay for the check into the savings. Gotta, let me think about this. If I got two fifty in this account and I got, uh, we ain't doing because Donnie got like six accounts, so y'all y'all know how she's moving. I, I can't, I can't do. Yeah, man, gross is different Yo, than that. In my here. client said this morning he was like. Man, my adrenaline, the husband of Anthony, he's like, my adrenaline was going, man. Y'all were just collecting. It was 10,000, 10,000, 20,000, 250. He's like, my hand went up. And he's like, I want to give his, he's, he's like, I want to give $10,000. And he's like, lift your hand up. He's like, my hand is up. My wife came over. And we yeah. like, <laughs> Calm down. We got to check the checking and Yo, the savings slow first. Down. <laughs> the temperature. Pipe down, sir. The temperature. He's like, I'm ready to cut the check right now. Where do I? He's like, I didn't fill out my form. I'm looking for Jen. And she's like, put the paper down. Like, can we have a family business right. meeting Yo. about this first before you? <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's, it's a blessing. Just and, and I feel responsible. I know Donnie feels responsible as well. We got 12 months to go hard because we can't be in the same position. Oh, God, no. First of all, we we have to produce the social proof. Yeah. Like 100%. that, it get we talk about consistency, we talk about hard work and efforts, we talk about partnerships, collection, collaboration. We talk about all these things, and this is the fruit of those seeds. But New seeds were planted last night. Mm, New seeds were planted Mm. last night. And I can't wait to see what they produce over the next 12 months. Like, I want the 12-month result right now, right? But I I can't wait to see. So it's funny that you say that because I'm seeing the the book, The 12-Week Year, right right, right over there. Is that over there? I don't know whose that is. Yeah, we're uh, we're actually, uh, there's our next uh, book club book. That's our morning meetup? Yep. Yo, I love that. I love that book. It's good. I've read the book twice. Oh wow! Literally, oh, and, it's, and it's big font. Yeah, I love it because I got a stigma. You can see so. it. Yeah. yeah, it's not that long. It's just that. Yeah, yeah it's not that long. <laughs> it just looks longer than it really is. Yeah. But just just to just to put what you just said on kind of like a macro perspective in terms of like I can't wait to see what the next twelve months look like. Yeah. I feel like just to kind of make this apply to everybody watching right now, I feel like if most entrepreneurs looked at their business and their life that way, mm-hmm. but shortened the time frame, they'd be a lot further than where they are mm. now. Explain it. Murphy's Law, right? So it's just kind of Murphy. Is it Murphy's Law or Parkinson's Law? One of the, some law. some Murphy's Law, right? Parkinson's Law, right? Some, somebody's law. It's a law. It's a law. It's a law. Mm-hmm. So basically what it says, like, if you give yourself X amount of time to do something, it will take mm. you approximately X amount that of time. Told, yep. But if I give myself a shorter period of time, 
You'll do it. I'll do it in that time. Yeah. If not, less than the original time. For sure. Mm-hmm. Most entrepreneurs, while I do commend them on it, they're thinking and they might be thinking about, oh, this might take me a decade to make or whatever the case may be. How can I collapse that? Yeah. yeah. Get a mentor. Mm-hmm. Get into a room. Invest in yourself. Mm-hmm. How can I collapse time? You think you're the first person to be doing something like this? It's a good possibility. You're probably not. So find somebody who's already doing it so they can help you do it better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If it's going to take me 12 months to make a million dollars, how can I do that in six? I might not do it in six, but I might do it in eight. Yeah. yeah. I might do it in 10. Yeah. You feel me? So it's like, how can I collapse time? How can I literally take this much and shrink it into this much? Maybe I need a bigger team. Maybe I need more resources. Maybe I need more skills. Maybe I need to find the who and not how. That's another great book. Mm-hmm. Maybe I need to find the people who can get me there even faster. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, bro. I the 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 fact and here's another thing. Like so, the six hundred thousand, right? They're giving me the six hundred thousand, and I have to be a good steward over it. So, I don't necessarily have time to every single day being in trenches of uh, building out the nonprofit. But this is, I'm so blessed for this opportunity because I get to be a real, not an entrepreneur, but a real business owner. Mm-hmm. A real, I'm excited about the fact that me and Donnie got to sit down and say, okay, here's the board that we got to put together. We need to hire somebody. This ain't somebody you hire for 30,000. Like I need a full-time grant writer. A grant writer is going to go get millions. It might be a six figure position. Like we probably, I don't know, maybe have to go get a building where like people come in and we find somebody to, you know, to be the CEO and the CF, not a CEO, but a um, director, mm-hmm. I believe it's with nonprofit director. And then someone over accounting and we really get to take the money and build infrastructure of a business I don't know how to do that yet. That's what most business owners lack. Yeah. I mean, all of I mean, I, I've I've never done that. Where here's the idea: I'm going to hire a CEO. I'm going to hire everybody around it. Y'all go run the business. Mm-hmm. Mo, no, I don't. I don't know about. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe y'all do. We I used to muscle, but it most people, yeah, most people have never been in that position, right? A revolt, a, a ditty, right? He has bad boy takes the money, says, "Yo, I'm going to hire a CEO of Revolt, CFO." CMO, we're going to hire these people, infrastructure, and run the business. I'll be the brand. Y'all need some strategy. I'll, I'm sure I'll be there. But having people run, that's a whole nother level of leadership that I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. That is exciting. Yeah. That so. is exciting. That's actually um, the mastermind that we're in right now that I travel back to Texas for in, what, two days? Mm-hmm. Is about, is teaching you how to go from uh, entrepreneur to business owner. Mm. just on a whole other level, right? Mm. Because at this level, we think we're business owners. We ain't doing that. We ain't, we, we not. We a lot not of us is owner yet. operators. <laughs> right? <For sure. laughs> right? Owner, we're, we're owner operators. We gotta, we gotta, be, we gotta be a in the videos. Us, we gotta make the TikToks. Yeah. A lot of us have created very high level, high paying jobs. And when you think entrepreneurship and for people who, who have it in their minds, what you see in your head, what you want, that, that thing that's floating around in your imagination, that's business ownership. Mm -hmm. That's real hard. Most of us haven't gotten there yet. Absolutely not. (laughs) Absolutely not. We're still the CEO. We're still, we're still calling the shots. We're still Mm -hmm. the visionary Mm where we wake up and figure out how we're going to grow this business today. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, but now we get a chance to hire somebody that's going to wake up every single day and say, how am I going to grow this thing? Mm-hmm. I'm excited. That so is we got exciting. meetings. That's why we got we meetings. So uh, have you know, meetings. We got meetings. We got meetings. <laughs> we got meetings. So we got- I'm not going to homecoming anymore. Oh, so funny. I know he told me. Yeah, because last night, Brian, the Social Proof Alumni Fair dinner that you missed out on, man, hate that you missed it. But... <laughs> <laughs> We're supposed to be going to our old college homecoming, and I'm like, this was homecoming vibes. Did this you go there too? Was, yeah, I didn't graduate. Wait, y'all yeah. went to the same college? No, me, not me. And no, 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 somebody else. Oh, my boyfriend. So yeah, we literally. That's all I was doing was going for the vibes that homecoming give. I didn't care about the game or anything. You just want to go somewhere. You want to turn up because we don't really get to turn up. Not like that, right? Mm-hmm. Last night was first of all, all the brokies used to date. See all the a, you know, I didn't date a lot of guys <laughs> in high in uh, college. I had like a long term situation, mm-hmm. and and then another long term keyword situation. situation. Or, or, or all the uh, all the all the little uh, the little chicks that I was hating on you in college. You get to walk for out sure. 
For sure. Check your ties Hater. in front of them with the rollie. Uh, <laughs> what'd you say? Oh my God, it's good to see you too. <laughs> That's crazy. Huh? That. You said what? That's crazy. What did you say? You said do what? No, let me check. I might have something in my bag. Um, let me know. Bumba clots. What? <laughs> you said you need the key to the what? Oh, do I have your Ferrari key? <laughs> sure I do. It's right next to the Lambo. It's right next to the Lambo. No, it's a G-Wagon. <laughs> oh, you said the Rolls key? Let me go find that. <laughs> oh, coming. Do they still do high school reunions? I feel like Yeah, they don't. I miss mine. I miss mine for the I, first time. I can't wait to ever. go to mine. I'm flexing. I don't care. You, you flexing? flexing? I'm f- what? I mean, a lot of my high school friends follow me on Instagram. They DM me from time to time. Like, you will be. I said, how, like, how old are you? 27. Dang, boy, you ain't even had the 10-year reunion yet, huh? I'm about to touch it. I Next graduated. year. Yeah, next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next year. Oh, yeah. oh, you going back with a major? Flag. I'm going. Oh, they already go. No, I'm coming. You already know what you're wearing. Yeah, you already know what you're wearing. I'm coming. I'm like, I'm gonna like, yo, y'all see the school that that y'all on right now? I bought it like last week. Right. <laughs> like, I'm coming different. Oh, are you guys enjoying the new stadium? I built that. <laughs> oh, did you see whose name was on? It's the Waldron Foundation. <laughs> you know, I, I wrote that off though. I love I'm it. Coming I'm coming different. I'm coming different. Dave, well, are you, you, you got anybody that you could be flexing on right no, now? No, of course not. No? No. Not no. a single person. Not a single person. Dave I, is a nonchalant that I, flex. That I want to talk about on. That you want to talk about on well, social <laughs> podcast. But trust and believe. Nah, nah, y'all I, see I, it. Anyway, I don't, right? no, I, don't, I don't have anybody that I can think of that like did me wrong or somebody that said I would never make it. Uh, maybe some teachers that wouldn't remember me. There's one guy, one guy in particular, he looked like Ned Flanders. That was, that was all. I, I don't remember his name, but he was a teacher. And he talked about this, this blue bubble coat that I used to wear every single day. He's like, you come in this class, you wear the same coat every day Aww. in front of the class. And obviously it was true. Everybody's <laughs> laughing. Damn. Uh, but that, other than that, I can't, I can't remember nobody to like beat me up or. You didn't get beat up. Nah. I never, I've never experienced that. Um, you know, everybody has a story of how they were brought up. I have never had. I can't recall ever having a single person, teacher, adult, authority, or peer tell me I would never make it. Like I can clearly remember all the people, teachers, adults, peers, who told me. You're going to be something powerful one mm. day. Like, I can remember that clearly. Um, I'm trying to think of somebody maybe I really, really liked that turned me down. Yeah, you had plenty that of That would them. be cool. I haven't had plenty. You, you've you had plenty. Plenty chicks who weren't with it. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Plenty. David... David grew into himself. I did. Yeah, David, def- for sure, I lie to you. grew I into did. himself. Like, David never sleeps for a reason. Yeah, I, nah, for sure. It's I a did. double entente. I was not always a, uh, um, the break. sex symbol you guys see today. Are you a sex symbol? What? Wait. I, I gagged a little in my mouth. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I hate y'all so much right now. I want to show you, Brian. Look, this was David. Can you get this? I can't. This was David in 2016. The, the chicks were absolutely turning that down. You're crazy. I had some. I had some, I had some. No, the nerd fit is in now. The nerd fit. <laughs> the nerd fit is in. All right, if I could just describe it to you guys, I'm wearing uh, black and white chucks, but they were they were like leather chucks. Just picture Steve Urkel, but like 2022. Makes them worse. Um, these are black jeans, um, a baggy. <gasps> What are we doing? Camera. Wait, where's the camera? Oh, Reese, can you get in on this? No. Can you get in on this? This That's is as far as it goes. This is, let me see. Let me see. Reese. See? Reese. Reese. Yeah. The archives. Reese. The archives. <laughs> Yo. Yo. Right here, right here. Bro. This is Dave. Just pack it up, this bro. Is, this is Cheesecake Factory. What? Oh, let me tap it. Just, just this pack is, it up. Dave, you were, you were absolutely getting played here. Yeah, nobody was, wanted the action. I don't know wow. if I was getting too much action. This I was, no, 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 I was getting this action. This is Cheesecake Factory Day. Hey, Brandon, I was Yo, still getting action. Women love a man in a tie. That hair texture, crazy. Women love a man in that a tie. Hair, that hair line. Hold on, let me say. Women me love see, a man in like, a tie. Like between the two, 
Hold them both up. I got to put There's them both definitely up the growth. It's just Hold on, hold on. So we got we got um <laughs> we still we still good, Reese. We got What year was this? B? This that one is 2010. About this is yeah. the year that David and I met right here when we were both doing. There's a glow marketing. up though. This is first. This is second. There's a right. Glow, there's a this, glow up. First of all, you guys in this picture, David was like, "Miss Donnie, can I please have a picture?" Yeah, she was. You lying? Nah, that's a fact. Cause she's the <laughs> she's the one on stage. So he's in this company where she's getting recognized for making all the money, like highest, uh, like you know, big women, woman in like one of the highest female income earners in the company and she's traveling and like she's lit so it's like a full circle moment pre vacation mm -hmm. it's like a full circle moment right here yeah. this is well but no, but you know what built since then yeah for sure so i was then. i was a full-time entrepreneur in that picture i'm still i still had some value like i'm building this t-shirt brand and it was dope the message was dope that's what i'm saying it didn't seem like it doesn't seem like we were there and now we're here. It's mm -hmm. been, yo, you've been my dog for a minute. And for a minute. We just, we're just here now. And mm. the crazy thing is, I'm trying to find it. Um, I said on stage last night that people don't know that we have been podcasting since 2016. Mm -hmm. We didn't even know that we have been podcasting since 2016. I'm going to post this clip later today. I don't see it on my phone right now. But we used to sit over at the E-Complex. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, Brandon shot me would turn on the turn the camera on us and just record and we'd just be same energy. So what we're we talking about today yep. is just that we were doing it for social media content. We were mm -hmm. building our Instagram at that time. We didn't even know that what we were doing essentially, I think this this partnership is what's full circle. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. at that time we were just getting together to create content. Yep. Now we figured out how to actually monetize it. And, and, you know, it was monetizing, obviously, at that time, building our brands. But what we were doing then was impacting us more than we were impacting people, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Now what we're doing in, in this platform, we're impacting people in a much different way. So this was just all like everything has just been preparation. Mark Sterling, I think, introduced you and I. Yeah. Um, Mark Sterling introduced us, somebody who worked in the, in the network marketing company with us. David and I did the whole, oh, yeah, nice to meet you. He's like, yo, she's powerful in this space. He's super dope entrepreneur, sells these T-shirts. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come see. The, I'm going to come by the kiosk. I'm going to buy something. I actually went to the kiosk and buy some. It wasn't one of those situations where. Like you little gonna, rode him. We're going to get to. No, like, like, you know, we tell everybody, even if they're dope and we think they're dope, it's always, yeah, we're going to connect. We're going to do X, Y, and Z and never do. Yeah, sure. Until you see them a year later, two years later. And it's like, yeah, remember we said. You can go through cycles like that with people all the time, but we actually connected. Like yeah. bringing T-shirts. David gave my daughter her first job. Wow. Mm -hmm. Her first job. Her first job was working for. I don't know if it was her first. Um, first job. First job working for an entrepreneur for sure. I think she did Chick Fil A before. She did Chick Fil A. Yeah, yep. she worked yep. at Chick Fil A first, but. She worked, David, Deja has worked through my circle. She worked at David's kiosk selling t-shirts and um, you were a part of that journey. And we would do entrepreneur events, sit in those two black chairs at the E-Complex. And then me, you remember me, you and Zach in 2018, 2019. Yep, we did a podcast. We yep. did a podcast. We attempt, we were like, the we're going to do this was podcast terrible or together. Something. something, the audio was terrible. We never released it, never came back to it. But yep. this is something, this, it wasn't a new idea. Like we have been trying to do it. When Dave started the social proof podcast, he had a different co-host. It was never meant to be the other co-host. Yep. Like, this is something that we've been building the whole time. Wait, yep. who's, who, who's the other co-host? So, I was doing one. I was like, dang, I need a co-host. And I started this, me and the young lady, We just, it just didn't work out. We just, yeah. It just didn't work out. We did, like, two or three episodes. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. And it just didn't work out. But it out. was intentional. It yeah, wasn't it was, supposed to. It happened the way it was supposed to happen. God did. God did. <laughs> God did. That's the only word I know. God did. God did. Yo, man, we got to wrap this up, man. Um, I, I, Brian, first off, man, I, I like how you move, man. Thank you. I really like how you move. Um, I, I've never seen anyone make money from event spaces like you do. Thank you. Um, and be able to not only switch because now you're well-rounded, it's not just event spaces. Now you're 
in, okay, how do we get the credit and get the funding to get the event space mm -hmm. and investing in real estate? So essentially it's all in the same lane, but you've expanded it. 100%. You know what I mean? So, and you all, you always keep good energy, man. So, then you, yo, energy is everything, man. Yeah. Energy. I want, that's one of the biggest things I want people to always remember me by. Cause a lot of people can come up and like talk a lot of game, right? Like yeah. textbook stuff, but they boring, yeah. right? Yeah. For me, it's just kind of like, yo, how can I really, like, I want people to remember me. Yeah. And not like on some corny stuff or anything like that, but I want people to really like, you know, vibe out and just enjoy the whole experience. Mm -hmm. It just goes back to being a server. Honestly, real yeah. talk, I feel like, I want my kids to be a server. I'm not going to lie. Like, not as the ultimate goal, but, like, I just feel like that it teaches experience. you. That experience. It teaches you people skills, sales skills. Humbleness. Humbleness. When servitude. To shut the crap up. <laughs> just, like, you just learn how to be, like, a, a good person. Yeah. 100%. And I feel like... I feel like your experience, Cheesecake Factory, your experience, network marketing, my experience as a server, like, it just... It all... It reflects in our businesses and our success. Yeah. And it's it's just it's it's just so much more room at the top. You know what I just realized? Two things. One, I'm changing your name your name in my phone today, and I'm I'm gonna call you Bridge. Like that's that's my name. Everybody gets a nickname. Your name is Bridge, okay? And you know why? <laughs> I explained it right. Just straight to the bridge. But the second thing is, this is not gonna be the last that we see of Ryan. Oh no, nah, he's gonna nah. come back. Will you, will you grace us? Will you come back? Dude, I have to be back. Yeah. We family now. Yeah, we, family. We, got, we have the meeting. Yeah, we man. have the. We got to have these conversations, man. Yeah, these conversations. Yeah. Because, you know, with some, like the first one, it was an interview where I'm interviewing you. You're teaching about event spaces. But I think what's more impactful sometimes is just let's just let's have a let's have a discussion. Yeah. Around a topic. And it's not the things that you're taught. It's the things that are caught from a conversation. You know what I mean? Like you saying something. It's not like a one, two, three step on how to. It's like, yo, this is life is ch I. My life has not been changed from a step-by-step -step tutorial. Mm -hmm. My life has always been changed, not from what someone said on stage, but what I was thinking in the moment. Right. That sparked that light an bulb. idea. The light bulb that went off in my head based on what I heard. That's what I remember. Yeah. That's what really, really changed my life. So For sure. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. Let us know how, how we can get uh, get in touch with you um, and anything you got going on that you can offer. Yo, absolutely, man. Honestly, yo, if y'all want to... Which camera am I looking at? Right there. That one, perfect. Yo, tap in with me, at Brian, M-N-K-N, on Instagram. Give out tons and tons of free game. Follow the page. Make sure y'all subscribe to the Social Proof Podcast. Y'all know how we get to it. Y'all know the type of conversations we having. Let's get it. Let's go. Let's Peace, y'all. Let's get yo, it. Real quick, um, somebody get us in contact with Avion because we're, we're doing you, we've been doing be. a whole lot. It's been in your shot the whole time. Uh, we drink a whole lot of Avion water. So Avion, if you, we know that somebody on your team is on social media, we drink this on every single podcast. Man. I drink this every single day at home. Uh, we definitely would appreciate a little love. Yeah. And I'm not talking about a box of water. Yeah. And there's always somebody that says, <laughs> yo, I can get in touch with them. Do us a favor. Set up the meeting and then tell us you set up the meeting. You're right. Ooh. We will clear our schedule and be available uh, for that meeting. Just make the connection, then come back and say, yo, I, I made the connection. They're already interested. Like, let's, instead of, yo, I can get in touch with them. I, so get in touch with them then. Yeah. This should have been a group thread. Exactly. <laughs> with the person that you got in touch with. Exactly, exactly, <laughs> man. Listen, y'all, go like, subscribe, please. Follow Brian. Follow my sister, Donnie, man. She's amazing. All your clips are like going viral. The clips go crazy, don't they? Only the ones when you are wearing shirts like that. Wow. So. <gasps> wow. I moved my mic. <laughs> no, that, how did that help? <laughs> no. No, the mic doesn't help. I'm at glad all. it's at least happening on my episode. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting like I this just, with I, the mic I perfectly. Know, I know it's the other day, like, yo, she got some really good clips that's going. And I'm like, that is Turns not true. First of all, <laughs> it's always the episodes where I'm looking super busted that ends up going viral. It's never the episode. Yes, it is. You had a little bustier joint on one of those. Yo. Next time we going shopping before my hit. episode. We going shopping before my you episode. Want, you, you make this go viral. Yo, we need this. We like Donnie needs to be in place this. Put Donnie in position. I want to see her like before she walk in. Send me a picture. Like, listen, <laughs> listen. I don't mind taking the viral hit for the team. All right, I don't mind taking the we viral hit eat. for the team. Taking it for the no, team. No, taking it for the team. Pause. All right, y'all. Uh, <laughs> hey, yo. Pause. All right, man. We are out of here. Like, subscribe. Peace.